Good day everyone! For now, you are going to learn another topic because today you are going to learn about the flag and heraldic code of the Philippines. Today's objectives, so we are going to explain the salient points of the Republic Act 8491 and lastly, we are going to develop a positive attitude towards the importance of complying with the standard expressions of respect for the country's national symbols. So, I hope that at the end of this uh, video presentation, you are going to attain those objectives. And by the way, let me introduce myself. I am Ina Isabel Fulgurinas, and I am going to discuss the salient points of the Republic Act 8491, otherwise known as the Flag and Heraldic Code of the Philippines. But before we are going to start the discussion, let me share to you a quotation. So, it's in your DNA to be a Filipino. How can you just turn your back on it? So, this quotation is from Miss Leia Salonga. Now, let's continue. So, let's start. We have here the flag and heraldic code of the Philippines. So, which is otherwise known as the Republic Act 8491. Now, let me give you an overview about this act. This is an act prescribing the code of the national flag, anthem, motto, coat of arms, and other heraldic items and devices of the Philippines. And it is signed into law by President Fidel V. Ramos on February 12, 1988. We have here Section 1. So what do you think is the content of Section 1? It states that this act shall be known as the Flag and Heraldic Code of the Philippines. Section 2, which is the Declaration of Polity. We have here, reverence and respect shall at all times be accorded the flag, the anthem, and other national symbols which embody the national ideals and traditions and which express the principles of sovereignty and national solidarity. Let's proceed to Section 3. Section 3, it contains the definition of terms. Now we have letter A, which is military. Now how is military being defined in the law? So, according to the law, all branches of the armed forces of the Philippines, including the Philippine National Police, Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, and the Bureau of Fire Protection. Letter B, we have festoon. Festoon, that means to hang in a curved shape between two points as a decoration. Now we have flag. So what is a flag? So that is the Philippine national flag. So this is the Philippine national flag. And now we have fly. So what does it mean by fly? That means the part of the flag outside the hoist or mast. Now we have symbol. How is symbol being defined in the law? So it is any conventional sign which reveals man's achievement and heroism identification, authority, and sign of dignity. Now let's have half-mast. So I'm sure that you are very familiar with this one, half-mast. So that is lowering of the flag to one half the distance between the top and bottom of staff. Later, you are going to learn more about half-mast. Now let's have another one. We have voice. Part of the flag nearest the staff or the canvas. How about inclement weather? A typhoon signal is raised in the locality. Now we have national anthem. So you are very familiar with this national anthem. The, that shall mean the Philippine national anthem. We also have official residences. So that is Malacanang and other government-owned structures where the president resides and other structures occupied by the Philippine consulates or embassies abroad. So that is very understandable. Places of frivolity. This refers to places of hilarity marked by or providing boisterous merriment or recreation. Now we have institute. Tell me the National Historical Institute. Now let's go to the chapter 1 of this law, which is the national flag. Now we have here, the design of the flag. Now, according to section 4 of this law, the flag of the Philippines shall be blue, white, and red with an 8-rayed golden yellow sun 
and three five-pointed stars as consecrated and honored by the people. So this is how the Philippine flag looks like. So we are very familiar with that. We are now going to discuss about the hoisting and display of the national flags. We have here section 5. The flag should be displayed in all public buildings, official residences, public plazas, and institutions of learning every day throughout the year. You need to remember that the Philippine national flag should be displayed according to the above mentioned places or areas. Let's go through section 6 of this law. The flag shall be permanently hoisted day and night throughout the year in front of the following. So we have Malacanang Palace, Congress of the Philippines, Supreme Court Building, Rizal Monument, Aguinaldo Shrine in Kawit, Cavite, Baraswain Shrine in Malolos, Bulacan, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier or the Libingan ng Mga Bayani, Mausoleo de los Veteranos de la Revolucion, all international ports of entry, and other places as designated by the Institute. And moreover, the flag shall be uh, properly il illuminated at night. Now let's go through Section 7 of this law. So the flag shall also be displayed in private buildings and residences or raised in an open flagstaff in front of said buildings every April 9 or the Araw ng Kagitingan. We have May 1, Labor Day, May 28 to June 12, National Flag, National Flag Days and Independence Day. We have also Lasan Day of August, that is the National Heroes Day. November 30, that is Bonifacio Day, and December 30, we have Rizal Day. And on such other days as may, as may be declared by the President and or local chief executives. Flag may be also displayed throughout the year in private buildings or offices or raised in the open flag staff in front of private buildings, provided that uh, they should observe flag raising ceremonies in accordance with the rules and regulations to be issued by the office of the president. So now let's have section 8 of this law. All government agencies and instrumentalities and local government offices, government owned corporations and local government units are enjoined to observe flag day with appropriate ceremonies. Social civic groups and non-government organizations and the private sector are exhorted to cooperate in making the celebrations a success. So let's go through section 9 of this law. The flag shall be flown on merchant ships of the Philippine Registry of more than 1,000 gross tons and all naval vessels. On board naval vessels, the flag shall be displayed on the flag staff at the stern when the ship is at anchor. The flag shall be hoisted to the gaff after, at the aftermath when the ship is at sea. Now we have here section 10. The flag, if loaned from a flagpole, shall have its blue field on top in time of peace and the red field on top in time of war. Flagpole staff must be straight and slightly tapering on top. So you need to remember the flagpole staff must be straight and slightly tapering on top. Now let's go to section 11. If planted on the ground, the flagpole shall be at a prominent place and shall be of such height as would give the flag commanding position in relation to the buildings in the vicinity. So if you are going to put the flag uh, in a flagpole and the flagpole is planted on the ground, should you need to consider its position and its, uh, its position towards the building. If attached to a building, the flagpole shall be on top of its roof or anchored on a seal protecting 
So we have section 15. The flag shall be raised at sunrise and lowered at sunset. It shall be on the mass at the start of official office hours and shall remain flying throughout the day. Now the flag may be displayed. So where can we display the Philippine flag? So inside or outside a building or on a stationary flagpole. If the flag is displayed indoors on a flagpole, it shall be placed at the left of the observer as one enters the room. We can also display the flag from the top of a flagpole, which shall be at a prominent place of, or a commanding position in relation to the surrounding buildings. From a staff projecting upward from the window sill, canopy, balcony, or facade of a building like that so section 16 oh, it's a continuation so in a suspended position from a rope extending from a building to pole erected away from the building also flat against the wall you can also put the flag against the wall vertically with the sun and stars on top hanging in a vertical position across a street with the blue field pointing east if the road is heading south or north, or pointing north if the road is heading east or west. So, like this. Now remember, the flag shall not be raised when the weather is inclement. If already raised, the flag shall not be lowered. Now we have section 17. The flag shall be hoisted to to the top briskly and lowered ceremoniously. So the flag shall never touch anything beneath it, such as the ground, food, water, or other objects. So in other words, the Philippine flag shall be handled with care. After being lowered, the flag shall be handled and folded solemnly as part of the ceremony. So this is how we are going to fold the flag. So, you can look at the picture. Now, all government offices and educational institutions shall henceforth observe the flag raising ceremony every Monday morning and the flag lowering ceremony every Friday afternoon. The ceremony shall be simple and dignified and shall include the playing or singing of the Philippine National Anthem. So, now let's go to section 19. The office of the president upon the recommendation of the institute shall issue rules and regulations for the proper conduct of the flag ceremony. The observance of flag ceremony in official or civic gatherings shall be simple and dignified and shall include the playing and or singing of the anthem in its original Filipino lyrics and march tempo. So... During the flag raising ceremony, the assembly shall stand in formation facing the flag. At the moment the first note of the anthem is heard, everyone in the premises shall come to attention. Moving vehicles shall stop. So, moving vehicles, they should stop in order to show respect. All persons present shall ace the right palms over their chest. So, we do like this. Those with hats shall uncover, so you need to remove your hat, while those in military, scouting, security guard, and citizens' military training uniforms shall give a salute, which is prescri prescribed by their regulations, and which sh salute shall be completed upon the last note of the end. During the flag lowering, the flag shall be lowered solemnly, and slowly so that the flag shall be down the mast at the sound of the last note of the anthem. So, during the lowering of flag, dili magdali-dali, because uh, the flag shall be down the mast at the sound of the last note. Those in the assembly shall observe the same deportment or shall observe the same behavior as for the flag raising ceremony. So, we need to remember our behavior the way we put respect during the flag, the flag raising ceremony shall be the same as for the lowering of the flag.
Now let's go through about half mass. So the flag shall be flown at half mass as a sign of mourning on all buildings and places where it is displayed as provided for in this act. On the day of official announcement of the death of any of the following officials. So we have the president or a former president for 10 days. So if if ever the president or a former president died, so uh, the half mass should last for 10 days. We also have the, fi the vice president, chief justice, president of the senate, and the speaker of the house of representatives for seven days. Also, other persons to be determined by the institute for any period less than seven days. So remember, if president or former president, the half mass should last for 10 days. Vice president, chief justice, president of the senate, speaker of the, of the house of representatives for seven days. And we also have other persons determined by the institute or the government that is for less than seven days. So this is how the half mass looks like. Now let's go through about casket. So very familiar. Uh, we often see uh, the Philippine flag at the top of the casket. For some uh, officials who died, so the national flag may be used to cover the caskets of the honored dead as recognized by the state. So, dili tanang tao butangan of a Philippine flag at the top of his or her casket. So, that person who died must be uh, recognized by the state or official ba siya. And when, posi when positioning the flag, the white triangle must be at the head of the casket. So, as what we can see, so the white triangle should be on the head of the casket, while the blue field must cover the right side. So, the right side of the casket should be covered by the blue field and the red field on the left side. To prevent the flag from falling off, a black band may be wrapped along the side of the casket. So, you, as what you can see in the picture, there is this black thing. So it is used so that it will prevent the flag from falling. Before lowering the casket, the flag must be folded and handed to the hearers of the deceased. So, si flag dili siya ipadala sa ano sa namatay. So it should be folded and should be handed over to the hearers of the deceased. So pili hata siya sa family. The national flag must not be lowered into the grave or touch anything to the ground. So that's it. Now, let's continue. Now, we have pledged to the flag. Are you still familiar or can you, uh, have you memorized it? Uh, the pledge of the flag. So, memorize kayo na to ni sa una. Sa elementary pa ta, o hantod ka ron. Dili dili siya, pwede kalimtan. So, let's uh, recite all together the pledge of the Philippine flag. Ako ay Pilipino, buong katapatang nanunumpa sa watawat ng Pilipinas at sa bansang kanyang kinasagisag na may dangal, katarungan at kalayaan na pinakikilos ng sambayan ng makadyos, makatao, makakalikasan at makabansa. Now let's go through the flag days. So the period from May 28 to June 12 is of each year is declared as flag days during which period all offices, agencies, and instrumentalities of government, business establishments, institutions of learning, and private homes are enjoined to display the flag. Now we have the specification of the national flag. So the flag shall have the following proportions, the width of the flag, the length of the flag, and the size of the white triangle. The technical specification shall be as follows. So, so the blue color shall bear, so we have this, uh, I think, the color code, cable number 80173, the white color, cable number 80001, the red color, cable number 80108, and the golden yellow, which has the 
code cable number 80068. Now, in order to establish uniform criteria in the making of our national flag and to guarantee its durability by the use of quality materials, the following standards and procedures shall be observed. All requisitions for the purchase of the Philippine national flag must be based on strict compliance with the design, color, craftsmanship, and material requirements of the government. So, dili ka pwede magpatakataka o color o putol sa mga design sa Philippine national flag. All submitted samples of flag by accredited suppliers offered for purchase for the government use shall be evaluated as to design, color, and craftsmanship specifications by the institute through its heraldry and display section, which shall stamp its approval or disapproval on the canvas reinforcement of the flag sample submitted. The sample shall be sent to the institute by the requisitioning office, not by the flag supplier. And the Industrial Technology Development Institute or ITTI or the Philippine Textile Research Institute of the Department of Science and Technology shall evaluate the quality of material of all flag samples and certify whether the fabric for the blue, white, red, and gold and yellow colors, including the canvas submitted, conforms to government requirement as to quality of the material. The samples shall be submitted by the said office to the institute. Now, let's know the prohibited acts under this law. So, it shall be prohibited to mutilate, deface, defile, trample on, or cast contempt any act or omission casting dishonor or ridicule upon the flag over its surface. To dip the flag to any person or object by way of compliment or salute. To use the flag as a drapery festoon, tablecloth, as covering for ceilings, walls, statues, or other objects. As a pennant in the hood, side, back, and top of motor vehicles. As a staff or whip, for unveiling monuments or statues, and as trademarks, or for industrial, commercial, or agricultural labels or designs. So, we should remember to avoid these acts or avoid those above-mentioned prohibition. We also have this to display the flag under any painting or picture. So, we need to avoid displaying the flag under any painting or picture. It should be above other things. Horizontally face up, it shall always be hoisted aloof and be allowed to fall freely. Below any platform or school fix or sa mga diskuhanan, cockpits, night and day clubs, casinos, gambling joints, and places of vice or where frivolity prevails. To wear the flag in whole or in part as a costume or uniform. To add any word, figure, mark, picture, design, drawings, advertisements, or imprint of any nature on the flag. To print, paint, or attach representation of the flag on handkerchiefs, napkins, cushions, and other articles of merchandise. To display in public any foreign flag except in embassies and other diplomatic establishments and in offices of international organizations. To use, display, or be part of any advertisement of infomercial and to display the flag in front of buildings or offices occupied by aliens. So aliens that can also mean in the constitution as foreigners. Now let's go to chapter 2, the national anthem. The national anthem of the Philippines is entitled Lupang Hira. The national anthem shall always be sung in the national language within or without the country. So it is not required or allowed to translate our national anthem. So we need to sing it with our national language. The rendition of the national anthem, whether played or sung, shall be in accordance with the musical arrangement and composition of Julian Philippe. Philippe. So, so you need to sing it in accordance with what what has been composed by Julian. 
When the national anthem is played at a public gathering, whether by a band or by singing or both, or reproduced by any means, the attending public shall sing the anthem. The singing must be done with fervor. So we need to sing it lively. And whenever we hear it, we need to come into attention and sing the national anthem. The anthem shall not be played and sung for mere recreation, amusement, or entertainment purposes except on the following occasions. So international competitions where the Philippines is the host or has a representative. So very good example for this is during a, during a boxing competition. So before the start of the fight, there is someone who needs to sing the anthem or the Philippine national anthem. We also have local competitions. So whenever we have our seminars or meetings, um, before we start that seminar or meeting, the national anthem needs to be sung. During signing off and signing on of radio broadcasting and television stations, so this is very familiar. Before the initial and last screening of films or before the opening of theater performances and other occasions as may be allowed by the institute. Now let's go to chapter 3, the national motto. So the national motto shall be Maha Dios, Maha Tao, Maha Kalikasan, at Maha Bansa. So you need to remember it all the time because we are Filipinos, we should know, we should know the national motto of our country. Now let's go to uh, chapter 4, the national coat of arms. The national coat of arms shall have pale rays of two pieces, azure and gills, a chief argent studded with three mulets equidistant from each other, and in point of honor, a white argent over all the sun raiment with eight minor lacerates. Beneath shall be the scroll with the words, Republica ng Pilipinas inscribed thereon. Now let's have chapter 5, which is the Great Seal. So the Great Seal shall be circular in form with the arms as described in the preceding section, but without the scroll and the inscription thereon. Surrounding the whole shall be double marginal circle within which shall appear the words Republica ng Pilipinas for the purpose of placing the great seal, the color of the arms shall not be deemed essential, but tincture representation must be used. So the great seal shall bear the national motto. So here, this is how the great seal of the Philippines looks like. The great seal shall be affixed to or placed upon all commissions signed by the President and upon such other official documents and papers of the Republic of the Philippines as may be provided by law, or as may be required by custom and usage, the President shall have custody of the Great Seal. Now let's have Chapter 6, Official Seals and Other Heraldic Items and Devices. Any government entity, including the military, may adopt appropriate coat of arms, administrative seals, logo, insignia, badges, patches, banners, and initiate awards, citations, order or decor orders or decorations, as may be authorized by the Congress or the Office of the President. Such heraldic devices and items shall be filed with the Institute for Recording and Evaluation, as to precedence, design, customs, and traditions. The Institute shall promulgate the corresponding rules and regulations, which shall be submitted for approval of the office of the President or to Congress. All government offices, including the military, are hereby ordered to purchase all heraldic items and devices from manufacturers accredited and authorized by the Institute. Such items and devices shall be subject to inspection by the purchasing agency's internal inspector and the COA representative using the design and specifications approved by the Office of the President or by the Congress through the Institute. 
no government official or employee shall accept any orders or declarations from any foreign government without the consent of the Congress and without the prior evaluation and documentation of such order or declaration by the Institute. Now let's uh, discuss about the penalties under this law. Failure or refusal to observe the provisions of this act and any violation of the corresponding rules and regulations issued by the Office of the President shall, after proper notice and hearing, be penalized by proper censure, which shall be published at least once in a newspaper of general circulation. The Department of Education, Culture and Sports, and the Commission on Higher Education upon the recommendation of the Institute and after the proper notice and hearing, shall cause the cancellation of the recognitions of permit of any private educational institution which fails or refuses to observe the provisions of this act for the second time. The Department of Education, Culture and Sports, and the Commission on Higher Education shall ensure that the national anthem as adopted by law shall be committed to memory by all students or both public and private educational institutions and perform during the flag ceremony conducted in accordance with the rules and regulations issued by the Office of the President. In addition, they shall make available the vocal, piano, or band scores for of the national anthem as adopted by law to all private and public schools as well as the general public. Any person or judicial entity which violates any of this, any of the provisions of this act shall upon conviction be punished by a fine of not less than 5,000 pesos, but not more than 20,000 pesos, or by imprisonment for not more than one year, or both such fine and imprisonment at the discretion of the court, provided that for any second and additional offenses, both fine and imprisonment shall always be imposed provided that in case the, viola the violation is committed by a judicial person, its president or chief executive officer thereof shall be liable. So now I'll be sharing to you a news article which I read, read from inquirer.net and it tells about uh, violating the Republic Act 8491. So let's know the details. This is entitled, Filipino Barbers Slam for Using PH Flag as Caves in Warriors Heritage Night. Barbers of the group National Filipino Barbers Association recently drew flag after they were found using the Philippine flag as barber caves during the Golden State Warriors Filipino Heritage Night in California last March 10. The free haircuts were given to patrons during the Heritage Night at the Oracle Arena in Oakland. The Heritage Night was featured on the Filipino Channel's program, Balitang America, and showed J.R. Maliari of the NFBA talking about the initiative. It was also featured on the Warriors' official Facebook page and is believed to be part of Tanduay USA's Battle of the Barbers. So, let's look at the picture. It is very, they are very disrespectful of how they use the Philippine flag as capes. So, let's just look at the picture. I think, so this is a statement. I think Filipinos do have style and we love to incorporate it and express art. It's the art of barbering that is able to express the way we want to serve people. Malyari was quoted as saying, I think as Filipinos, we love to serve and we love to help others and make people look fresh. What was supposed to be an initiative to highlight Philippine heritage, however, took a contrary turn as the group was called out online for the misuse and misappropriation of the Philippine flag. For your information, our Philippine flag embody the national ideals and traditions and which express the principles of sovereignty and national solidarity don't use it as a barber cape may i remind you ra8491 section 34 paragraph a and c of the philippine constitution so this is from jonas Ar agricola so this is a uh, retrieve from twitter so let's look at this it is supposed 
it's a tweet <laughs> it's a tweet from Shane Costes so heritage 2019 golden state warriors ginawang barber cape ang philippine flag this is disrespect exactly let's continue the republic act number 8491 section 34 details the prohibition the prohibition of using the philippine flag as drapery and festoon it is also prohibited to wear the flag in whole or in part as a costume or uniform among others following the backlash maliari took to social media on march 16 where he apologized for the nfda's misuse of the national flag as barber capes during this particular event our intention was to use our platform to express pride in and raise awareness of our heritage by highlighting our flag design. So this was explained by Maliare. It was not our intent to offend or inadvertently disrespect any of our fellow Filipinos or our country in any way. Maliare further said that the NFDA will no longer use the Philippine flag as barber capes when providing haircuts. Please accept my sensory's apologies as I have made an honest mistake and I'm eager to learn more about how we at the NFDA can continue upon our mission while navigating respectfully. He, that is what Mulgari said. So, that's all for my discussion about the Republic Act 8491. I hope you learned something. You learned, you develop appreciation towards our Philippine flag and everything, Philippine national anthem, Philippine national motto, and all of the others I have mentioned a while ago. So thank you for listening and watching. I hope you enjoy and have a great day. Bye-bye and thank you.